Hello gamers! As you might have noticed, I'm a big fan of co-op games, as I enjoy their social and teamwork experience. Co-op titles don't get the love they deserve, so I'm here to highlight 10 co-op games you might not have heard of or skipped. A quick side note before we start, I never mentioned this but I noticed that 98% of viewers are not subscribed. I appreciate if you could help me raise the number as it helps push my content to more viewers. With that out of the way, let's kickstart our journey with our first game. Children of Morta is a two-player co-op top-down action RPG with roguelike elements and tons of hack and slash. You play as one of the seven members of the Bergson family, each with unique gameplay style and abilities. Every time you level up, that member provides bonuses to the family even if you don't choose them, which is quite a unique take on upgrading characters. The controls are easy and work well on both keyboard, mouse and gamepad. Co-op is unlocked after a quick tutorial that guides you through the basics. Visually stunning pixel art and animations captivates the eye while the engaging story unfolds, keeping you hooked until the end. The plot deals with powerful subjects such as loss, grief, hope and sacrifice. The narrator alone deserves an award for his performance throughout the game. A wall impeding further progress. A battle was certain. I almost forgot mentioning how fantastic the soundtrack is. Each run is also randomly generated, offering a unique experience. With side missions and special powers, there's always something new to discover. Fallen players can be revived during battle, allowing surviving players to strategically use powers to gain time for a revival attempt. Children of Morta is difficult at start, but you'll quickly level up and start unlocking helpful abilities to push you through the almost 14 hour campaign. The game is also potato certified. With a strong open critic rating, I can easily recommend Children of Morta at any sale for its addictive gameplay loop and narrator. This could not be the end. No. Nine Monkeys of Shaolin is a two-player co-op side-scrolling beat-em-up video game developed by Russian developer Sobaka Studio and published by Buka Entertainment and Raven's Court. You play as a kung fu fighter in an environment similar to the kung fu movies of the 1970s. It is a game about revenge and death. Nine Monkeys of Shaolin does try in many places to adhere to real historical events, places and weapons. The action starts immediately after a short intro setting up the story. Controls are easy to learn and responsive. You can button mash to some extent before reaching levels where you have to execute special attacks to counter enemies, so focus on learning the controls well. Local co-op works perfectly using a keyboard, mouse and gamepad. Online co-op and remote play are also supported. Combat is very satisfying as attacks feel crunchy and hit hard providing a strong connection. Dodging and parrying are essential skills you must master to survive and maintain your combos. Players can be revived if knocked down but timing is also crucial here. There are a good variety of enemies, weapons and upgrades keeping the game fresh at all times. The game is visually beautiful with lots of colors and eye catching backgrounds. The devs even provided the option of changing the colors to black and white giving you the Akira Kurosawa vibe. All this and the game is potato certified. Nine Monkeys of Shaolin took around 7 hours to complete and has some replayability by unlocking higher difficulties. A lot of players complained about bugs but thankfully they were very few during my playthrough. With a fair open critic rating and only 500 reviews on Steam, this game needs more love, so I highly recommend you get this game on any sale. The devs also have another game on the way called Kyborg, which seems to offer similar gameplay mechanics. Super Motherload Originally a flash game, Super Mother Load is a fun, easy to play drilling game with up to 4 player local co op support. The game supports 2 players on keyboard and 2 players on gamepads. You select from one of 7 miners, each with variable stats, before you are dropped on the surface of Mars in a cube like mining rig and have to drill for resources to profit your corporate masters. A quick tutorial is there to guide you through the basics. The game loop is simple and addicting. You drill, collect resources, head back to base to refuel, 
cash in and upgrade your rig. Upgrades include extra fuel and better drilling tools and power-ups to reach deeper areas. Another engaging mechanic is smelting, which encourages you to combine different elements to create more valuable materials. Exploration keeps super mother load flowing as you reach new depths, discovering puzzles to solve and grab valuable resources. Without going into spoiler territory, the ending was quite unexpected. I completed the game in around 5 hours and with mostly positive reviews on Steam, Super Mother Lord is worth a purchase on any sale. Final Exam is a spin-off from the obscure series of horror games and is developed by Mighty Rocket Studio for all platforms except the Nintendo Switch. The game is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up with both melee and guns in a Devil May Cry style. The game supports up to 4 players in online mode and 2 players local using keyboard mouse and gamepads. After selecting from one of 4 unique characters, the action instantly begins with a short intro and quick tutorial. The controls are basic and easy to learn except it took me a while to figure out that a double tap of the S key was needed to pick a weapon. Although combat is a bit easy, it still offers lots of fun mechanics like juggling and throwing enemies, throwing explosives and unleashing class specific powers which are needed in desperate times. Combos are fun to execute as you see the counter climb up to insane numbers, it is up to you to lock in and collect the combo score or risk keep going and lose it all by getting hit with a rogue pixel. Final exam offers fantastic level design with lots of gameplay variety. There's always a unique mechanic thrown at you every once in a while, in addition to a good variety of weapon and secrets to discover. At the end of each level, you are graded based on your performance, this creates replayability as you try to climb higher on the leaderboard. Visuals are cartoony and do an excellent job of conveying the action. Ultra wide screen is supported too, yay for that. I completed the main campaign in around 8 hours. There is also a horde mode for an additional challenge where you defend against endless waves of enemies. Final exam has a very positive review on Steam. I highly recommend you pick this up on any sale if you want to play it in co-op. God's Trigger God's Trigger is a game developed and published by Techland, a company with a diverse range of titles to its name, including Call of Juarez, Dying Light, Torment, Tides of Numenera, and Dead Island. God's Trigger is what happens when you take the top-down, ultra-violent Hotline Miami formula with its one-hit kill mechanic and add co-op. After a quick tutorial, the action instantly starts, one player controls an angel and the other a demon. All it takes is one hit to get you disabled before needing your partner to revive you. Each player has unique skills like a blade that cuts in a wide arc or a hook that does damage to enemies in a straight line. As you progress, you unlock new skills and weapons. There is even a holy hand grenade. After completing each stage, you are rewarded with a grade based on enemies killed, collectibles found, time taken and number of deaths. The checkpoint system is generous as it allows you to experiment with different approaches. God's Trigger is as expected, filled with violence and the visuals clearly reflect that as red liquid covers the floor and walls after you exit the combat area. The game is built on a cell shaded visual layout which looks gorgeous. Co-op is not an afterthought as you need to work with your partner to achieve challenging objectives such as taking out a sniper and activating platforms. Enemy variety is another strong point, armored units need multiple hits while others throw explosives at you. A fantastic soundtrack will accompany you throughout the levels in addition to sound effects that further elevate the experience. I read some reviews where players talk about numerous bugs but thankfully I did not encounter any. Ultra wide support is available, providing you with more space to plan your next move. With a strong open critic rating and a playtime of around 5 hours, God's Trigger is an easy recommendation if you are looking for a challenging top down shooter. Orcs Must Die 2 is a trap based action tower defense video game developed by Robot Entertainment as the follow up to the original Orcs Must Die. But this time, guess what? it now supports online co-op. 
This is a third person game and your role as a mage is to build traps and fight waves of orcs to defend rifts. After each wave you are given time to recover and place more traps. Traps can be placed on the ground, walls and ceilings. You can also deploy guardians in the form of archers, knights and dwarves. Passive abilities come into play through different items you unlock such as faster trap reset time or healing guardians. You as the mage can also take part in the action by fighting the orcs directly. You can take damage so be careful as you will lose points for being knocked out. It is an instant game over if enough orcs reach the rift so plan well. As you progress you upgrade traps to be more effective or unlock an additional ability which can help counter even more enemy types. After finishing the campaign you can take part in endless mode battles where you have to hold off endless waves of orcs. With its charming cartoony visuals, Orcs Must Die 2 runs well on potato certified PCs. The game is in third person view so a keyboard and mouse are the optimal controls as you need to quickly flip between placing traps and targeting enemy orcs with your weapon. Co-op tower defense games are a rare commodity and with its very positive review on Steam, Orcs Must Die 2 is a must play so grab it in any sale. I replayed parts of the game to capture gameplay for the video and still had a blast and even went the extra mile of perfecting every level. Orcs Must Die 3 is currently also out but I have not yet purchased it. Let me know in the comments if you played it. You didn't even check to see if I was breathing. Hunt Down is a run and gun 2D side scrolling video game developed by Easy Trigger and published by Coffee Stain. It was released on all platforms and has even been ported to Android and iOS. Hunt Down plays like the good old Contra games with enemies coming at you from both sides. It supports two player co op with three characters to choose from. Each character has a special weapon from knife throwing to boomerangs. Let me start by saying that the pixel art is exceptionally crafted with amazing parallax backgrounds and animations. Not to forget the powerful voiceovers and effects which are also the game's strongest points. Hound Down falls short in the gameplay department where combat can become stale after a few levels. It can be summed up as you walk up to a car or door frame, hide behind it, wait for enemies to stop firing and then fire back and repeat. There is a good variety of weapons, both ranged and melee, which keeps the experience fresh. Flamethrowers and grenades are just part of your arsenal of deadly tools. Boss fights are a hit or miss, some are too easy, while others have you constantly restarting the level. The soundtrack is one of the best I've heard in quite some time and instantly jumped to my playlist. This is another game that should only be played in co-op mode and it's made easy with the remote play support. I'm going to be honest here and say that I did not finish the game as this video would take forever to complete but according to how long to beat the game takes around 6 hours. The game received a mighty open critic rating on steam and is worth buying if you are into side scrolling action. Xmorph Defense is another fantastic co-op tower defense shooter game that deserves more love. Although the game is marketed as a tower defense game, it also integrates shooting mechanics as you control an airship that can take out air and ground units using a vast array of weapons from lasers to missiles. I really like this concept as you feel involved in the intense action taking place. You play as an alien life form invading earth to harvest the energy from the core. Xmorph Defense looks stunning with eye-catching water reflections to satisfying physics effects as debris scatters in all directions as units explode or buildings come crumbling down. Having a bomber crash into a forest to later catch fire or it crashing into enemy infantry is just pure eye candy. Enemy units and boss fights offer a great challenge. The variety of enemy units and tactics used will keep you planning your next counter move. Memorable boss fights such as Godzilla like mechs will have you take it down piece by piece. You get access to around 7 types of towers each with a specific role such as anti-infantry and artillery for long range action. The key here is to balance your role as the captain of your ship and the deployed towers. 
I played the game with a keyboard and mouse and it is also playable with a gamepad as it supports split screen and online multiplayer. Currency comes in the form of crystals collected from destroyed enemies. Audio is another powerful feature of X-Morph. To this day, I still remember the scream of one general that piloted an experimental mech as it came crashing down, obliterating everything in its path. It took me around 15 hours to complete the game and its DLCs. Thankfully, I did not experience any bugs or crashes and the game runs butter smooth even on my potato hardware. The developers still offer a demo if you want a taste of the experience. Xmorph Defense received a strong open critic rating and is easily worth a purchase on any sale. Renegade Ops I am so glad I replayed the game again to capture footage for this video. 5 hours flew by as I recompleted the game and tried all characters. A total of 7 characters are available to choose from, including Gordon Freeman from Half-Life. In short, you can blame Renegade Ops for the reason why this video took more time to upload. Renegade Ops is an isometric, dual stick shooter, vehicular, combat video game with role playing elements developed by Avalanche Studios who are behind the Just Cause series and Mad Max game. This is one of the oldest games on the list but is still spectacular to play even 10 plus years later. The tutorial is basic and is composed of a few text blocks to read so you can go through it quickly. Split screen co-op only works with two game pads and it is clearly emphasized when you try to enable it. With ultra wide screen support, split screen is not an issue as you get lots of screen estate. The game is visually spectacular, explosions and flamethrowers are a treat to watch, physics effects are also exceptional as structures collapse when you crash into them. I was shocked by the eye candy level here for a game this old. Renegade Ops implements an experience system with a tech 3 to unlock powerful abilities. Driving vehicles is smooth and feels amazing as you drift around mowing houses and trees or even evading missiles coming your way. Weapons are satisfying to use, machine guns, pack a punch and rockets explode with impact. Everything is rendered here using the same technology that powers Just Cause 2. Don't take the story too seriously as it feels like one of those 1980s action movies. Just enjoy the ride. With a very positive rating on Steam and if you are in the mood for an arcade non-stop action game, I just cannot recommend this game enough on any sale. Horizon Chase Turbo This is a game with 4, yes, 4 player split screen co-op as you race challenging opponents and attempt to collect every trophy. My interest in car racing can be labeled as almost non-existent, however Horizon Chase Turbo instantly hit me with its nostalgic feels, bright and colorful palette and captivating audio. The game loop is simple. To collect the super cup on each track, you must collect all blue coins and finish in first place. You can run out of fuel, so collecting gas is essential. Cars consume fuel at different rates depending on power. To top it off, you can activate a nitro boost for insane speeds. Cars can be upgraded to improve acceleration, top speed, nitro boost and even fuel capacity. New cars are unlocked as you progress. Each has unique traits and you'll eventually find one that matches your driving style. My favorite is the cable car and another that resembles the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Ultra wide support and 4K graphics look gorgeous as you race through day and night tracks and variable weather. This game is made for almost everyone as the controls are smooth and easy to learn. You cannot drive off the map nor do you have to use complex mechanics like drifting. Two players can use the same keyboard which is a rarity and this is made easier with the support of remote play on Steam. I can't forget mentioning the fantastic music 
by Barry Leach, who is the sound designer in 90s racing classics such as Top Gear and Lotus Turbo Challenge. With a strong open critic rating, Horizon Chase Turbo is a must play and can be purchased for a few dollars during sales. The sequel, Horizon Chase 2, launched in 2023 and also received positive reviews. Make sure you check it out if you enjoyed the first. I hope this video helped you discover new co-op games and I still have so many more to share with you. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments and I will work on part 2. Feel free to recommend some of your favorites and I will include them. Check out this video where I played over 50 plus demos. A like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated and supports the channel. Thank you so much if you're still watching and I'll see you in the next video.